cloud is powering tomorrow's transformative missions. Federal agencies are partnering with SAIC to help them meet these critical moments, where bold moves require confident blueprints, where you can accelerate transformation through consistency, where you can innovate forward and never look back. SAIC quickly and securely migrates large-scale workloads to the cloud with the confidence you need to assure your mission. Learn more at saic.com slash cloud. Welcome to Notepad. I'm your host, Ibrahim Sani. Uh, today, we have H.C. Chan, uh, the CEO of Sunway Malls and Theme Parks, uh, joining us in this conversation of whether or not the road uh, ahead for mall industry is better and brighter, and how do we move forward in terms of living with COVID-19. H.C., uh, thanks for coming on the show. Uh, prior to the pandemic, uh, global trade was teetering delicately uh, between uh, the spat or the argument between U.S. and China, Malaysia registered their lowest GDP growth in the past decade since the 20, 2009 financial crisis. And of course, now we're hit with the COVID-19 pandemic. And retail is extremely crucial. I truly believe in the idea of how retail is the pulse of the economy. Uh, let's talk about how was the mall and retail industry faring. And more importantly, how about Sunway Malls? Uh, as I said, over the last 20 months, I mean, uh, the severity and the duration of this uh, uh, lockdown has impacted across the industry. I think Sunway Mall is no exception. So, uh, but I'm glad to note that uh, the uh, business have shifted back close to normality. I think as we enter Q4 uh, 2021, uh, the, the, the footfall sales are hitting about 80% of normality. And uh, we foresee uh, that as we move into November and December, we are confident that uh, Sunday malls will move closer even to the 90% range of, uh, of, uh, of footfall and uh, business recovery. So hopefully this will spill over into 2022 and uh, we hope to see a, a, a full recovery you know, comes uh, 2022. Except for certain sectors which are still uh, uh, affected, as I said, the, the travel-related uh, business, uh, the business are in fact uh, affected, like the body exchange, they are affected. Even certain city, certain uh, businesses like the cinemas, I think they are also affected because of the nature of the business. But even saying that, I think business recover well uh, comes uh, Q4 and into 2022. Uh, looking at Sunway Reed, your price is stable throughout the pandemic. Uh, is there anything that is contributing to this uh, stability? I think the most importantly, we all thought that this is temporary. It's a, it's a temporary thing. Uh, yes, I think the p and I, I call it uh, p and have been shaken the last 20 months. Huh? But you'd like to see a more stabilised p and comes uh, 2022. I think Sunway, uh, we are confident uh, with the pace of the recovery and the uh, retailers. Actually, just to share with you, uh, uh, over the last uh, 20 months, we have opened actually uh, 360 shops. 360 shops. I think while the industry is uh, facing a consolidation and closing of shops, Sunway malls are a bit, uh, we are still confident Let's say over the last 20 months, we have opened uh, just about 360 uh, new, new shops across our seven malls. So I think that is certainly a, a confidence uh, that uh, the, the retailers are coming along with Sunday malls. COVID-19 has been detrimental. In fact, last year we saw the biggest contraction of the retail industry for the past few decades. Um, and the last time we saw this was during the Asian financial crisis in the late 90s. How do you think uh, this is going to impact uh, the mall and retail industry, particularly uh, the Sunway Mall's business? I think over 2020, the, uh, the impact was quite severe. I think nine out of the 11 uh, retail subsector contracted uh, throughout Q2, Q3, Q4, and even the first quarter of uh, 2021. So there were four consecutive uh, uh, contractions. I think which is quite closely linked 
to our GDP growth. No? Because GDP growth and the retail spending, there's obviously a strong correlation. As I uh, always say that the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the spending in the shopping mall actually is a good economic barometer of the health of the nation. Because there are millions of people that shop in the mall every month. I say. So I think it, it, it has a very good feel and pulse of what is happening in the country. So uh, the, we, we like to think that the worst is over. The worst is over. And uh, certainly, I think we are seeing a recovery. And uh, the, the signs are very encouraging because the, uh, the footfall is, uh, is going back to close to normality, 80, 90 percent. And uh, the, the, the sales too, I think, which is coming back to normality. So we are confident going forward. Hopefully by 2022, I think business should be close to normality as per like 2019, when we were trading at a historical high. Could you share with us what 2020 has been or 2021 has been in terms of setback? How bad has these past two years uh, put the business behind? Uh, when it comes to the normal trajectory growth of uh, Sunway malls and theme parks? Oh, I think the setback was uh, was phenomenal. I mean, there's no, no surprise. I mean, they, they had affected the world globally, internationally, and I think Sunway is, uh, is no exception. But I think we have responded to this uh, pandemic challenge uh, very well uh, because Sunway malls, we were one of the first, uh, actually, our head you know, to grant a, a full uh, rent relief uh, for the first two months when the uh, pandemic broke up because there was a lot of uh, deep concerns on, on, uh, on managing cash flow. So uh, Sunday Mall actually was the first uh, mall in, in the country to uh, grant this, uh, the tenants, uh, our business partner, the, uh, the first two weeks of uh, full rent relief. I would say uh, since that, I think all in all, I think Sunway Mall have granted uh, a total of about 250 million uh, ringgit uh, as far as rent relief are concerned. I mean, that's a substantial sum of money, you know, by any standard. But we believe that it's a good uh, long-term investment to protect and to preserve uh, the, the occupancy level uh, in the mall industry. Because the, one of the biggest challenge I think uh, when, when business come to a, a lockdown, like the city mass, you know, they were closed for more than 365 days, right? I mean, like even the uh, food and beverage uh, outlets, uh, they were closed uh, also for over 300 over days. But I think for that 400 over days out of the 600 days, they were limited even until today, uh, certain uh, locations due to capacity. Uh, I remember for, for quite some time, and uh, besides the lockdown, they were closed, but when the SOP opened up, when there were capacity limitations, say two to a table, that also straight away half the capacity of a business you know, in, in the restaurant. So I think depending on the, the, the sector of the business, the FMB sector was very badly affected. The entertainment, the leisure, the, the family entertainment centers, they were very badly affected. But saying that there were some bright spots, you know, uh, certain sectors like the uh, the uh, the home furnishing, you know, especially the, uh, the electronics and, and the electrical shops, you know, shops like Harvey Dorman, I mean, they, they were doing fantastic business. Yeah, uh, computers are selling very well and at the home, uh, basic appliances are doing very well. And obviously for groceries, I mean, throughout the pandemic season, I mean, uh, they, they, did, they, they did very encouraging sales. So there were this couple of uh, bright spots, you know, uh, in the retail sector, they were doing very well. But uh, broadly speaking, the other nine sectors among the 11 sectors, I mean, was uh, really uh, trading, I would say, haphazardly, you know. There were instances they were doing well, but instances where a business grant to a zero, I think that's very tough, you know. Yeah, and just to share with you uh, the Sunday more experience uh, where the uh, First MCO one happened, the MCO two happened. I think after that a year, they felt that the greatest challenge was cash flow. Cash flow means when business grant to a hawk, when business revenue is zero, and you got to pay rent, you got to pay 
uh, wages, you got to pay bills, you got to pay, pay inventory costs. I think that was very, very tough. Oh, besides, I think granting a, a, a rent relief up to the 250 million ringgit, we also have facilitated, facilitated with RHB Bank and the CGC to offer these, uh, credit, these uh, financing facilities for them. You know? uh, because uh, after uh, 12 months, a lot of the savings or buffers or reserve, I think, were exhausted. So uh, that's where uh, fresh capital, I think, was required. So I think the CG, the RHB and the CG, CGC move did help to uh, uh, provide some fresh capital uh, for the uh, Sunbay tenants and uh, a lot trading uh, to start to recover. Because cash flow, I think it, it's, it's a very important matter to address during this pandemic uh, period. All right, you see, we'll go for one short break. When we come back, we'll discuss a little bit more on the retail business, but more importantly, on consumer sentiment. We'll be right back after these messages. Welcome back. I have on the line H.C. Chan, the CEO of Sami Malls and Theme Park. Uh, H.C., let's talk about consumer sentiment because we know that this has been a large bearing on the retail industry as well as on the retail recovery. Um, it is also a good uh, benchmark to locate uh, private consumption uh, as well. And we know that uh, for now, uh, at least based on the budget, uh, private consumption does contribute a large portion of the national GDP. How do you think uh, this will uh, shape moving into 2022? Yeah, I think it's certainly, I think in Malaysia, uh, the, uh, the shopping mall industry, I think it's largely driven by uh, local domestic consumption. Yeah, I think for the Malaysian mall, I think except for maybe a few malls in the city centre, uh, Malaysian malls are, are largely uh, local consumption driven. So uh, I think with the coming uh, stability of the economy, uh, especially uh, going into next year, the projected uh, five percent, five or six percent GDP growth. We are confident uh, that, uh, that, that the spending will be there. Actually, uh, over the past uh, one month or so, I think we did notice some uh, pent up demand. Yeah, pent up demand. So after so many months of being uh, being restricted and to the homes, now I think uh, we are seeing some good signs of pent up demand. Uh, especially we, we are going into the festive season of Christmas, New Year, and uh, the Chinese New Year season. So uh, the, the, the spending will, will, will be maintained. And uh, I think together with the recent uh, uh, government uh, injection of some of these uh, more funds uh, into the economic sector, I think certainly that will have the liquidity and uh, provide more, uh, more spending uh, on, on the local front. Let's talk a little bit more about Sunway Malls and your recently launched Sunway E-Mall. Uh, what was the idea behind this? Are you guys moving away from being a brick-and-mortar player into commercial player? What, what's the story there? I think even before the uh, pandemic season, uh, Sunway Malls have been considering uh, to go onto the e-commerce platform because... Uh, uh, today, I think we uh, have seven malls across Malaysia. Uh, so I think it's, been, it's very timely. So the Sunway E-Mall is part of Sunway's digital transformation program, whereby I think uh, to go into the uh, e-commerce site, I think it's a natural progress uh, for us. So I think it works very well because now we have the convergence of physical and e-mall business. Uh, I think here, uh, we have seven uh, malls across, and uh, going into e-commerce just provides us uh, new opportunities, you know, to harvest new uh, possibilities and uh, harvest new uh, new rewards. Uh, I think though in Malaysia the e-commerce e spending is still single digit, but we foresee in the coming uh, coming uh, years, in the next couple of years, uh, this that single digit spending in e so, Sunway Mall certainly uh, want to go into this particular sector uh, to also uh, benefit from the increasing trend uh, in the e-commerce. I think the pandemic certainly has transformed and expedited uh, much of the purchases uh, through e-commerce. 
I think besides the e-commerce platform, uh, Sunway Malls want to provide an O2O experience, that means offline to online to offline experiences. Because in Sunway Malls, uh, we provide the choice of either uh, you buy online and deliver to your home, or it's, a, uh, it's coming to the mall to collect. So we have the option of both, either deliver to your home, or you can collect in any of our seven malls. So uh, we hope that this uh, initiative will, will increase the footfall uh, coming to our physical mall. And uh, certainly, I think it's a very exciting uh, a sector to go into, uh, blending physical mall with the digital uh, e-commerce platform. So what kind of unique features is Sunway going to bring to the table differently compared to some of the competitors right now? I think certainly uh, it's, uh, it's, not a, it's not a choice, it's not an option. I think it's a necessity, I think, for, for Sunway Boss to go into the e-commerce platform. Because as seen uh, clearly during the pandemic season, the upscale or the, the number of big search, you know, that people are purchasing uh, into the uh, the e-commerce online. So for us, uh, it's a natural progression that we have to uh, meet the needs of our consumers, you know, uh, to buy items online. Because with this e e-commerce platform, I think we it helps us to cut across geography and cut across time. So now I think uh, the market, I think the digital. Uh, and the physical market now is coming together. And, uh, as I said earlier, I think the blending in of this uh, offline to online, off online, off O2O experience, I think is very important uh, for us. Because at the end of the day, I think Sunway has to provide a total uh, uh, customer experience. That, that means the choice, either you purchase uh, physically or you buy virtually. So I think this is the choice that we uh, have provided for, for our Sunway customers. Um, do you think that this is a differentiation that you're going to be able to corner the market, the e-commerce market a little bit more competitively compared to your pe uh, peers? We would like to think so. I think, I think in the industry, I think as far as I know, we are one of the first to take up this e-commerce in a very, uh, very, very serious uh, uh, manner. And we have spent the last couple of years planning towards that. So this pandemic season has expedited the, the, the launch of this e-commerce platform. So we always believe in giving our customers uh, choices, you know. So whether they buy uh, in any of the seven malls or whether they buy digitally. So I think uh, it's important uh, to meet the, uh, the changing lifestyle of consumers, because it has been shown uh, globally, uh, people uh, shopping online certainly is going on the spike. So I think it will be uh, not wise that we do not get into this e-commerce platform uh, to capture some of this uh, market, especially if some of these consumers are the same consumer that comes to our mall physically. So we like to think that we will have the best of both worlds, both worlds, you know combining the digital and the physical uh, more business. One area that we haven't really spoken of uh, just yet is actually theme parks. Uh, talk through us about the business of theme parks right now. Uh, what would be some of the pains, some of the opportunities that lie ahead in this segment of the business? I think for the Sunway more theme parks, I mean, uh, just like the city bars, I think you know, we have been uh, forced to close for a long time. You know? I think the closure day, I think it's over, also over, over 365 days you know, of the 600 days. So I think certainly it has been very, very tough for us. I think for Sunway, uh, we have two theme parks. We have Sunway uh, Lagoon theme park and uh, Lost World of Tamwood. I think together, before that pandemic, they attract up to 3 million uh, uh, visitors. You know, Half of these visitors was from uh, overseas, you know, outside of Malaysia. Obviously, with this... Uh, Border closure, I mean, it have affected about half of our market, yeah? And uh, the team have just opened uh, last uh, couple of weeks. I think certainly we, we are seeing a slow, but a sure a recovery in our team business. So uh, uh, I think it's important that 
that, that this uh, this theme park business, uh, like the city park business, I think uh, remains open, obviously with the highest, uh, the strictest level of safety protocol, so people can enjoy this uh, this facility, because uh, we realize over the pandemic season, I mean there is this lack of uh, outdoor leisure uh, facilities, so I think certainly the the, the opening of this theme park business have provided. Uh, 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 another venue for people to come to enjoy these outdoor facilities. And, uh, and on the theme park matters, I think we hope that the government can do more I think, to help the theme park industry. Because even before the pandemic season, I mean, they have imposed this entertainment tax, you know, this 25% entertainment tax on the theme park industry. And then together with the 6% service tax and plus together with corporate tax, we are paying a lot of taxes. So we want to appeal to the government uh, for this uh, entertainment uh, uh, tax for theme park, just like in cinemas, I think to be uh, to be waived, you know, because otherwise every dollar that is collected at the ticket, 25 cents go to pay taxes. And that is not so business friendly. So we hope that the government will seriously consider uh, uh, waiving this uh, this entertainment theme park tax uh, for for the theme park and for the city bus because it will allow I think uh, for the more people uh, especially the local locals uh, to enjoy this uh, this facility. Um, HC, any final uh, word before we conclude this conversation? Yeah, I think we look forward to 2022 where now with the SOP relaxing. And hopefully, when the borders, international borders, start opening, that uh, that overseas tourists, you know, uh, will start coming back to Malaysia. And certainly, I mean, many of our businesses, including the uh, malls, the theme parks, and the hotel, I think, will benefit from this. You know, I would say I think Malaysia have done very well. I think as far as vaccination is concerned, and today I think uh, this certainly has helped to expedite the uh, the recovery program. Uh, for the for the ball at the theme park industry. All right, thank you. That was H C Chan, the uh, CEO of Sunway Malls and Theme Park. If you've missed any part of this interview, just head on to Astro Awani and uh, look for Notepad. Also look for Sunway there. Until then, thanks very much for watching and goodbye. Cloud is powering tomorrow's transformative missions. Federal agencies are partnering with SAIC to help them meet these critical moments. Where bold moves require confident blueprints. Where you can accelerate transformation through consistency. Where you can innovate forward and never look back. SAIC quickly and securely migrates large-scale workloads to the cloud with the confidence you need to assure your mission. Learn more at saic.com cloud.